Brothers and sisters, I'm again privileged to address you um, tonight for a few moments. I pray that our um, being together tonight will be beneficial. I always like to begin my talk with a, a dua, a supplication that the Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessing be upon him. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'u. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. Um, those who are here tonight, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, I think the overwhelming majority of the, of the people here are Muslims. But I want to tell you what I'm going to attempt to do tonight. Um, I make no pretense of what I'm going to do tonight. My discussion is an age-old discussion. It's something that you're going to have to wrestle with as students in universities and colleges. And that is revelation from God or man-made law. That's the issue here tonight. And I make no pretense that where I'm coming from tonight is from what you call divine sources. I'm going to talk today about one of the most compelling topics confronting all of you as students and all of us, and that is wealth. I need someone to write on the board for me. I need a volunteer to write on the board. Come on, guys. When I tell you to write, I want you to write. I'm going to give you about six or seven things to write. First, I want, to, want you to put the word money. Under that, put gold. Three, property. Four, possessions. Five things. Six wealth. And seven stuff. Tonight we're going to talk about the secret. Thank you. Stay close by, I'm going to need you again. The secret of the mal, the secret of gold and possessions and property and things and stuff. We're going to talk about that tonight. And, and, and I, again, make no pretense where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the traditions of the prophets. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon all of them. And, and you have to make a decision as people of faith, are you going to follow revelation or are you going to follow mankind? I begin with something that the prophet said. This is what's called Hadith Qudsi. This is something that God said. Though it's not in the Quran, the prophet is saying that God said that Allah said, Ya ibadi, kulukun dolun illa man hadaytuhu fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my servants, every one of you are misguided. Unless I guide you, therefore ask me and I will guide you. This is why every day you say at least 17 times a day, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, guide me to the straight path. Why do you say that so often? Because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, without divine revelation, without the Quran, without Al-Injil, Al-Torah, mankind is misguided. Now, uh, I'm going to say something about the Torah. Torah. Put Torah and Injil, put it yeah, to the side. أَمَنَا رَسُولُهُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ 
Kulun amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi. Thank you. This Torah, Muslims believe in it, revealed to Musa alayhi salat wa salam, Allah said, wa anzalat Torah wal injil, and we revealed the Torah and the injil, the gospel, it comes from Allah. We do not believe that God sent many religions. We believe that God sent one religion. And this is why the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The Prophets, all of them are brothers. All of the Prophets are brothers. Their mothers are different, but their religion is one. So we believe that the divine source came to prophets, Moses, Jesus. And I want to show you what Allah says in the Quran about the Torah. Fiha hudan wa nur. Fiha hudan wa nur. And in it is guidance and light. What Allah says about the Injil, the Gospel revealed to Jesus. Fihi hudan wa nur. In it is guidance and light. So you must believe that God has always guided mankind through prophets and revelation. As Muslims, we believe in all of the revelation and we believe in all of the prophets. In fact, the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said about Jesus, إِذَا أَمَنَ رَجُلُ بِعِيسَى ثُمَّ أَمَنَ بِي فَلَهُ أَجْرَانِي Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me will have a double reward. So as Muslims, we don't make any distinction between the prophets. All of them are from Allah. Name them, and by the way, brothers and sisters, and I want to I wanna clarify something here, which Muslims, uh, I've, I heard an imam give a talk and said that God, uh, that um, Jesus and, and David Curse the children of Israel. How many ever heard that? Did you ever hear that? It's not true. You have to say what Allah says. Lu'na ladina kafuru min bani Israel, ala lisani Daud wa Isa ibn Maryam. The disbelievers of the children of Israel were cursed by the tongue of Jesus and 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 David and Jesus. The disbelievers. You see, brothers and sisters, you got to think about this. See, don't, don't make this mistake of condemning all of the children of Israel. You should never do it because you know what? Many of our great prophets came from the children of Israel. If you study the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, he said that the, uh, the uh, children of Israel had many prophets and once one of them died, was succeeded by another prophet. Now think about this. Think about some of the names that we have. This is just an aside for a moment. I'm going to go off to a topic for a moment. Would you mind? You don't mind? Okay, good. Think about this, right? Look at the names that we have as Muslims. And when I mention the name of a prophet, tell me if you know Muslims who have that name. Ready? Sulaiman. Okay. That's the name of, a, a, of, of the children of Israel. Prophet. Dawood. Children of Israel, Isa, Musa, Harun, Ayub. These are all children of Israel, prophets. And we take their names. So, we, don't, I'm, no, don't say I'm going to change my name now. No, <laughs> don't, don't do that. But you, you get my point? So don't condemn all of the children of Israel when Allah mentions the disbelievers among the children of Israel was cursed by the, on the, by the tongue of uh, uh, David, Prophet David, and Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, alhamdulillah. Thank you. Okay. Let's talk about money for, for a moment. Let's be real. You all want it. <laughs> Tell me one of you who don't. You want it. Of course you do. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> And let's, let's be real, it's, it's, it's needed. We need, we need money. 
You need money for tuition. By the way, brothers and sisters, one of my, um, one of the things I want to do, I'm not making you a promise now, but let me tell you one of the things that I would like to do is to find a way to finance um, students who want to go to college and get interest-free loans. I, this, is, this is a dream of, yes. There's an organization that doesn't Yeah, um, which, which organization? Continuous charity. Huh? Continuous charity. Where, where are they located? Get that information for me. Get it for me, right? Because is it is it are, are they working now in operation? Yeah, they're in operation. Okay, excellent. And um, what kind of money are they giving? They're giving loans. Like like how much? Uh, Partial loans, full loans? No, about some of them I've I've heard they've gotten loans about ten thousand dollars and more. Excellent. They're giving loans without any Excellent. This is um this is wonderful. Um I was this year in um, the west of um, Canada, in an area called Fort Mc McMurray, Canada. And alhamdulillah, there's some Muslims doing exactly that. But they don't have a whole lot of money, but they're making interest-free loans. So you need money to go to school. And, and the tuition is unbelievable. In some schools, the tuition is just mind-boggling. So you need money for school, you need money for food, and you all love to eat. Especially youngsters, man. Like college students love to eat. Okay, so you need it for you need it for clothing. You need it for to build masjids and synagogues and churches and temples and hospitals and and all of that. So so don't get me wrong. We need money. On the one hand, but money is is it's it's a um it's. It's, what I want to say, hmm? it's tricky, it's tricky. And what I like to do today is show you how tricky money is and what I'm going to, what I think do for you today. First of all, there is nothing in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in scriptures that prevent you from getting as much money as you want nothing. Allah is silent on the amount of money that you get. I'm going to talk about Al-Hakum al takathur in a few minutes. He's silent on how much money you make, but two issues that you never forget. Issue number one, min ayna iktasabuhu, how did you earn it? It's a crucial question with Allah. How did you earn it? Did you earn it in a lawful manner? Or did you, learn, did you earn it in a non-lawful manner, in a haram way? Number two, fima and faqahu, how did you spend it? So the two issues that's gonna be before us about mal, about property, about gold, about what, is how did you earn it? And number two, how did you spend it? Now, I said, I said money is interesting, and um, I'm going to do something that you seldom hear. You've heard me give lectures before. Seldom have you heard me do what I'm going to do today. I said that I'm coming from the tradition of divine guidance from Scripture from prophets. I'm going to quote something from the Bible, two or three things from the Bible. The reason that I'm doing it, I'm trying to show you the um, consistency in the message of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, with the message of Jesus. Now, just take a, li just, just take a listen. And because if there's some Christians here, they can, they can bear witness what I'm doing. I think this is incredible. In uh, Matthew, the 19th chapter, in the 16th verse, and just listen to me, and then, and let's just see if we can find something similar in the Quran or Hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And behold, one, a man came and said to him, Jesus, 
Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he, Jesus, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou would enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which ones? Jesus said, Thou shalt not commit murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I lack? And Jesus said unto him, Now listen to this. This is the essence of my, my, my talk. If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast. All that thou have, go sell it and give it to the poor. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven. And then come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Let's stop for a moment. Is Jesus saying wealth is bad? No. He's not saying wealth is bad. And this young man wants to know, how can I get to the kingdom of God? Jesus said, okay. Keep the commandments. Oh, I keep the commandments. Okay, good, good. Now, what I want you to do, take all of your wealth and sell it and give it to the poor. And that man couldn't do it. Number one. Number two. Jesus continues according to the Bible. And again, I'm coming from, from the scripture so that. And when the man heard that saying, he went very away very sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man can hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. Say, brother, that's the Bible, man. We don't believe in the Bible. We believe in the Quran. That's true. Let's see if the prophet said something similar. Let me give one more verse from the Bible if I can. And you probably all heard of it. I'm going to start it and you continue it. You finish it, right? The love of money is ha who said that say it again the love of money is the root of all evil it's in the bible is it in the bible huh so i don't know it's in, take it from me i used to be a christian it's there in timothy take it from me you believe me you believe me okay good all right. Where was Jesus coming from? Let's see what Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يدخل الفقراء الجنة قبل أغنيائي بخمسمائة عام. Poor people will enter paradise five hundred years before rich people. Why he say that? Why? Why did Muhammad say that? Hadith number two. Iti laktu fi jannah fra'idtu ahli ahliha al-fuqara. I looked in paradise and saw that the majority of the inhabitants were poor people. Hmm. Hmm. Can rich people go to paradise? Of course they can. Does being rich stop you from going to paradise? Of course not. But now let's see the reality. 
Now we're going to talk about the nature of human beings. And brothers and sisters, this is the secret of wealth. If you understand what I'm about to say now, you will get the secret of wealth. You will get it. And the prophet said it, peace and blessing be upon him, about six different ways. I'm going to give you a couple. He said, now, this word in Hadith literature, to Adam. Literally, it means the son of Adam. In Hadith literature, whenever you see Ibn Adam, it means all of humanity. That's what it means. It means the, 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 unless the prophet is specifically talking about one of the sons of Adam, when you see Ibn Adam, he's talking about humanity. So as a general, as a generality, it's not just men, it's children of Adam. That's all of us. Adam and all of us. Human beings, all of them, are the children of Adam, and Adam was created from dust. Now, the prophet said, if the son of Adam, the children of Adam, if human beings were given a valley of gold, a valley of gold, if he was given a valley of gold, this guy right here, this handsome, unmarried, unmarried, <laughs> married, this married, handsome man, if He's given a valley of gold, will not be satisfied until he gets a second valley of gold. And if he gets two valleys of gold, he will not be satisfied until he gets a third valley. Why? Because I love this guy here, man. Really, he's a really, he's a good brother, don't you agree? Really? I don't know. <laughs> He said, La Yamlu'ul Jaufa ibn Adam ila Turab. He said, Because nothing can fill the stomach of human beings except dust. Let me say what that means. This is a, what's called a euphemism. When it's said that nothing can fill the stomachs except dust, it means death. That a person will never stop mourning until they die. This is the nature of human beings. They want more and more and more. And no matter how much you give them, they still want more. Now, I'm going to put my granddaughter in the spot. Don't get, you're not nervous, right? You're not nervous, okay. Do you have shoes? You do. In front of the entire world, now, we, never, we didn't talk about this, right? I haven't spoken to you today, right? You have no idea what I'm going to do, right? OK. Still nervous? You, now you are nervous, right? Miriam, how many, how many shoes do you have? About? You don't know? <laughs> yes, you do. You, is so many you can't count? <laughs> about how many think you have? About? Hmm? About 10? Good. How many you have? A lot. A lot? <laughs> yeah. Rather not say. I'd rather not say. I love them. She put her head down. How many you have? A lot. How many you have? Eight? How many you have? Can I tell you that the average American woman, how many shoes they have? Do you know? What do you think? More than 50? No, it's not actually no. The average American woman has 19 pairs of shoes, but only use about four. Men don't have a lot of shoes. Watch this. Watch. How many shoes do you have? Three. How many? Three. Four. 
Huh? Two. Two. Four. 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 Three. 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 Huh? Six. Six. Four. Four. Three. Three. Five. Five. Four. Four. Three. Slippers count? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Four or five? Eight. Huh? Eight. Eight, man. Inshallah, you're the winner. <laughs> but you see my point? You, you get my point? Women is different. There are some women who wouldn't even tell us how many shoes they have. Now, who has the most shoes? Who is famous for, for having a lot of shoes? Huh? The right. The, the, she just, just, just. <laughs> she was the first lady of Philippines. Imelda Marcos was her name. Um, you know how many shoe, pair of shoes she had? Who is she? <laughs> it depends on who you're speaking to. They say the, the bare minimum, 1,600 up to 7,000. Unbelievable. What are you going to do with all those shoes? And you know, she was exiled. In many of those shoes, they said termites, termites ate it up, destroyed, wasted. People like stuff. 2003, I think it was, an album came out. What was the name of that album? Very famous. Huh? <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Get rich or die trying. Get rich or die trying. By Curtis Jackson, whose name? 50 cents. Now you can't say 50 cents. You gotta say 50 cents. <laughs> no, for real, honestly, honestly. If you tell somebody his name is 50 cents, you, you're not cool. You gotta say 50 cents. <laughs> and, and then two years later, 2005, he came out with a movie, the same name, Get Rich or Die Trying. Actually, there's a more accurate term he could have said. He could have said, get rich or go to prison trying. Because many people, because of this something about wealth, about money, about gold, about possessions, about stuff, about property, it's like you gotta have it. Let me give you some cases that just happened last week. A man murdered his son. Let me, let me put a word here that you should always use to help you evaluate things. It's a, it's a Latin word. Q bono. Say Q bono. Does anybody know what that means? Of course, you're going to tell us. Of course. Of course. Almost. Anybody know? Q bono? You and, and law enforcement have to understand this term. It's important. When you study what's going on in the Muslim world right now, you should always ask yourself the, the question, Q bono. Q bono means who benefits? Who benefits? When the World Trade Center was brought down, who benefited? See, detectives always want to know when they're trying to find the criminal, they ask the question, who benefits? Boko Haram, that group in Nigeria, who benefits? Has Muslims benefited? Did Muslims benefit from 9-11? Do Muslims benefit from Boko Haram? This ISIS, now look at the trick that, you, that we see now, ISIS, right? Islamic State of Syria and Iraq. IS? IS. IS, that's right. That's right. Islamic State, Iraq, and Syria, right? If you notice now a trend, I was reading today, I was in Atlanta, Georgia today, and I, got, I was on a plane and I, I got a, a copy of, of The Economist. And now what they're saying, IS, Islamic State. And everywhere you look now, they're saying Islamic State. We're going to fight the Islamic State. 
the subtle, the subtle is, is clear to me. Now, this Isis qui bono, qui bono. Do Muslims benefit from this? Is this giving da'wah? Is this making people want to become Muslim? Or is it making people hate Muslims? Qui bono. Last week, a man killed his son. I don't know if you heard about it or not. Well, that's every day, right? But why did he kill his son? Anyone have any idea? Yes. Again? No, that's a good, but that's a good guess. Couldn't afford to send him to school. That's a, actually, there's something, other, other things I'm going to mention that's similar to that. But no. Anybody know? Anybody hear about it? And what happened is that when he was arrested for killing his son, it found out, it found out that years ago he also killed his wife. And he killed his wife for the same reason he killed his son. And what was that? Hmm? Money? Money? In what form? Life insurance. Life insurance. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, if you research how many people have killed their husbands, their wives, their children, their parents just to get money, there's a woman who killed four family members just to collect the insurance. Yeah, imagine. Killing somebody, you're killing your father for insurance. Now, 50 cents. What did he do before he became a rapper? He sold drugs. And people trying to get rich selling drugs. Let me give you some facts. More money is spent on illegal drugs than on food, clothing, education, housing, medical expenses. Do you know that drug is an unbelievable multi-billion dollar operation? But is it legal? Is it ethical? Of course not. Because you know why? The money the money get the money it's something about that mal wealth it's a it's a trial it's a almost a curse it's almost a curse if you're not careful it can happen to you they said one of the oldest professions is prostitution a woman selling her body why would a woman Sell her body. Mal, gold, money. Now, what I'm going to say now is a little personal. Brother and sister, if I had a lot of money, you know what I would do? I would invest it in a business so that I can hire as many people as I can. And that's, that would be my only objective. Is it wrong to have a business to make money? Of course not. You can make as much money as you, as, as you want. But again, what are the two questions you have to ask? Number one, how did you earn it? Number two, how did you spend it? Now, the reason I say that, you go across this nation from Cisco and other major corporations that have laid off thousands and thousands of workers. You know why they laid them off? Could you blame them if they were losing money? And say, you know what, we have to lay you off because we're losing money. Could you blame them? No. But what if I told you that despite making billions of dollars in profit, they lay off these American workers? Why? Greedy. They're greedy. Because for them, everything is the bottom line. We gotta make more money. We ain't making enough money. Money. And you know one of the mistakes that we make? We look at the little people like this guy here. 
You know what I'm saying? He's a little drug dealer. Not that you're a drug dealer. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> but you know what I mean? We look at, look at them. Man, look at them little, them robbers, man. They robbing the people. But you know what? Some of the biggest robbers are nations. They rob countries. They do the same thing that little people do, the drug dealers do. But they do it on the highest scale. Money! Money, 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 money. The love of money, the dunya. This is what people love. They love the money. They love the dunya. Now, that, by the way, you know, does anybody know the most expensive house in the world? What country is it in? Huh? Say it again. Dubai has the tallest building, but not the most expensive personal house. Where is that? What country? India. Who said that? And who built that house? A man. A man from India. I love. I, yeah. You gotta give me a high five, man. All right. Now you're cool. Now, the richest man in India built a house, 27 stories, six stories just for his cars. 600 workers to take care of that house. And you know how much the house costs? One billion dollars. One billion dollars to have. Does he need that? I mean, come on. The stuff that's in it, the possessions that's in it, that's what people do. And you know what? It can happen to all of us because the human nature is, I want more. And if you get it, you want more. Ain't enough. So, so now, what are you gonna do? There's always an exception. Go back to the example of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. Here come this man, and he wants to know about eternal life. Do you really want it? I mean, do you really want it? Okay, sell everything you have. Sell it. Give it to the poor and follow me. Few can do that. He walked away, disappointed. Let me give an example of the exception to the rule. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that if I were given wealth the size of Mount Uhud, it wouldn't please me except I give it away in three days, except what I would keep to pay debts. This is the exception. Gold the size of Mount Uhud, the prophet said, and the prophet is not a liar. If the prophet said it, he means it. I'll give it away in three days. What does he know about this mal? What does he know about this money, this wealth, this possession, this stuff, the property? Exception. Number two. Umar radiallahu anha, would you agree he's a great Muslim? Second Khalifa, he said he got some money. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, ordered the Sahaba to give charity. And Umar said, I got this money, and today I'm going to beat Abu Bakr. I'm going to give more money than Abu Bakr. Money for what? To build a house, for shoes, for clothing, for kimars? No for charity. And so he went to the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, and gave him half his wealth. And the prophet said, what did you leave for your family? He said something similar. So that if Umar had 100,000, he gave 50,000 to the prophet and 50,000 to his family. These numbers I'm making up, you understand, but just to make a point. And then here come Abu Bakr. He goes to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. This hadith authenticated at Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood. He gives the Prophet everything that he has. And the Prophet asks him, Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your family? He said, Allah wa Rasul. I left Allah and his messenger. He gave everything that he had. You say, come on, man. Come on, Abu Bakr. Come on, Ak. 
<laughs> no, I can hear you saying that right now, really. I was listening to your little brain saying that. You know why? The key, the key is faith. Never ever let your objective in life be for money. Let your objective in life the pleasure of Allah. And money is a means for that. And this is why the companions, peace and blessing be upon them, the poor Muslims complain to the Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam. You know why they complain to him? He said, because the wealthy ones, ذَحَبَ أَحْلُ الدثور بِأُجُورِ The wealthy ones among us, they take all of the reward. They pray like we pray. They fast like we fast, but they're able to give charity with the excess wealth. We can't. We don't have it. So they want to compete, but it's another kind of competition. They're competing for al gender. And this is the key. You see, brothers and sisters, the problem with us is that we are caught up in this. We, this is the law. This is the thing that we want. And you know, you want to do some study? Law enforcement, many of you will go on law enforcement from those from, from John Jay. Um, some of you may be judges one day or prosecutors or even defense lawyers. Do you know who's going to come in front of you? A lot of cases. So many cases dealing with this. You know how many judges, how many Congress people, senators, and people that's been caught for fraud? Governors? Because of that. And this is the key. I, can clo I, I conclude with this. Al-Hakumu Takathur Hatta Zultumu Muqabir this word alha in Arabic is a what you call the derived verb. Alha, alha, from the word lahya. Um, alha means to to divert, take your attention away. Al-Hakmu Takathur. It's not just wealth, but it's competing with wealth. Trying to outdo the other in more and more stuff. A lot of times it's competition. I want more. My neighbor, my neighbor have this, and I want that. I want more and more and more and more and more. Hatta Zultu Muqabir. Zultu from the word Zara to visit. Zara to visit. Now, Zurtu means Zurtum, you visit. This is an, uh, another, what they call the euphemism. When you say Allah says, you continue to do that until you visit the grave. Allah doesn't mean that you go to the cemetery to visit the cemetery. No. What it's saying here is what the prophet said is that when you visit the grave, mean when you die. You continue that struggle trying to accumulate stuff until you die. And then when you die, you know the reality of it. Now, let's go back. Put the, um, put the eye back on. Put the... Who's my technical man? But I told him to leave the, the verse there. Which verse? Um, Al-Hakamu Tukathur. I want to go to the end of the verse. I want to go, I wanna, I wanna go all the way from there. Qala, qala, law ta'lamun, forth, forth, until we come. Here you go. Thumala, no, the next one? Yeah. Thumala tu saluna yoma idhana ni naim. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to try to wrap up. Leave it? Yeah, that's good. Leave it there. This is what I want to leave you with, brothers and sisters. Ali radiallahu anhu said, Inna yomul amul 
ولا حساب وغدان حساب ولا عمود. This is we are living now in a time of action and no accounting, and then there'll be a day of accounting and no action. Now, you have so many gifts from Allah called the ni'mah. And according to this ayat of the Quran, Allah is going to ask you about the ni'mah that you have. Two things the Prophet said, ni'matani, two things that most people, they miss. And that is free time and health. You see, brothers and sisters, let me talk about the sisters for a second. When you look at the woman this age, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. This is the time of great beauty. This is a time of strength. And you know what people do? And, and again, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying this to make fun of anybody in their religion. But people tell me from the church, uh, Alana last night, alhamdulillah, I met a, a woman. Her name is Sonia. She was an associate pastor in a church, she took shahada. Alhamdulillah. She was at my house last night. This woman is a gem. Her studying of Islam now, she's preaching, she came with her husband, and she goes to the masjid, she's studying, she's, she's studying everything. Most Christians will tell you that many of the churches are filled with old people. You know what it's like? smack in the face. Say, Allah, you know what? My best of myself, I ain't giving it to you. I'm giving it to the dunya. And later on, when I get old, I give you myself. When I'm 16, 17, 80 years old, then I go back to the masjid, I go back to the church, I go back to the synagogue. You brother strong now, the time to give yourself to Allah now. He said, nah, I'm wait. So I get older, you know what? Because you know what? I, you know, I got to have my fun now. Have me my fun. Give me my stuff, man. I got to get paid. <laughs> this is the attitude. Yeah, this is the attitude of the people. And you know what, man? And Allah is looking at us. You look at some of the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon them. They were young. And they gave their lives to Allah. And they gave Allah their lives to the deen. When they're young and strong and beautiful and all of that. But you know what? People don't really believe in the akhirah. This is, they want it now. And what this verse is saying on that day, everyone will be questioned about what they had. I give an example of a man, um, you heard about it two years ago in Bosnia. He wanted to make Hajj, and he didn't have much money. So know what he did? He walked from Bosnia to Mecca and performed Hajj, 3,600 miles. I fly, I, I, I have driven from New York to Atlanta, that's 900 miles. I drove, and I was tired after driving 900 miles. He walked 3,600 miles. You think Allah is not pleased with that? That person giving that for Allah? People spending their wealth for Allah? So in the end, brothers and sisters, I, I just conclude that be grateful for whatever you have. And believe me, you have a lot. Me, I look at myself, subhanAllah, I'm, I feel blessed. I'm not rich at all by any stretch of the imagination. Allah always give me exactly what I need. I had to go to the dentist and I got Two crowns put on my, my, my tooth. I don't know if you know what a crown is. You know how much it cost me? $2,000. No insurance. Allah blessed me to pay for it. Now it wiped me out, but I paid for it. So you need the wealth, but at what cost? That's my question. You will come, you will, some of you will be business people, some of you will have jobs, you will have money. I'm saying to you that whatever you have, you get it. You have a right to grow it. But don't forget your obligation. Allah makes it an obligation. Bunya al-Islamu ala khams. Islam is built on five. One of them is paying the zakat to give to the poor. 
and the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, have given us all a way to what to do with the money, with the wealth that we have. Please be careful. When I go visit the prisons, I'm shocked. How many Muslims in prison? People get desperate. They get desperate. They need money. Don't ever get desperate. I don't care how bad things get. You put your faith in Allah the Almighty. And don't you ever get desperate. And just remember that we're going to be held accountable for everything that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I pray that you become wealthy in the halal way. And that you spend it in the halal way. That Allah be pleased with you and that all of you into Jannah. Ameen. As-salamu alaykum.